Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for entertainment, educational, and critical thinking purposes only. We are really going to dive into this one, y'all. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. morning my lovelies my beauties my friends my name is Christina and welcome to my channel if you're new here thank you so much for clicking on this video I really hope that you will subscribe stick around take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say and if you are a returning subscriber y'all already know y'all are my babies so good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So today we are gonna be doing the very, very, today we're gonna to be doing the very, very highly requested Pazuzu. I have been requested to do this video on my Instagram, on my Patreon, and here. Like, I'm like, okay, you guys, I hear y'all. This is a very, very deep story. I'm gonna be challenging a lot of things in this, so I hope that you guys are ready. If you've already heard the story, and if you have not, buckle up regardless okay if you guys don't already know me hi my name is christina i do have a second channel which is casually christina i do vlogs it's more casual over there if you're into that type of thing i also have a patreon my patreon is for 18 and up we do some more personal story times we go live over there it is a good time if you're 18 and up and you would like to join we also have a podcast as well as i have an instagram and all of those are always linked down in the description box if you would like to come and check me out so first of all by the way, it is my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ding. Happy birthday to all of my other October babies out there. Every time you guys tell me it is your birthday in the comment section, if I see it and I try to see as many as I can, I like to give you guys a little shout out and happy birthday. So happy birthday to my October babies. I am indeed 36 years old today. Woo. Working on 40. Working on 40. But alrighty, you guys. Before we start this video... Y'all are like, oh my gosh, Christina. I really want you guys to think about who all is to blame in this story. Because when I look at this story, I see the fault lies on many different people. Okay, many, many different people. But all we hear is Pazuzu, Pazuzu, Pazuzu. So if you guys do not know who Pazuzu is, Pazuzu, he was born as John Lawson in 1978. John Lawson, who was later known as Pazuzu, was a satanic cult leader who loved animal sacrifices and murder and the power in filth. I mean, he only bathed once a year, according to what he said. And allegedly, according to him, he only brushed his teeth once a year too. He had a lot of sick fantasies. He even filed his teeth down to sharp fangs. He split his tongue. He had tattoos all over. When he did have hair, he didn't wash it, he didn't bathe. He had tattoos on him that said things like Satan and 666. John Lawson was originally raised in San Francisco, California. Okay, now he was born to his parents and then they later divorced. They divorced in 1990 when John Lawson was just 12 years old and he stayed with his mother. Now you don't hear a lot about his bio dad. I did read later that his bio dad actually moved back home or to a different state or whatever and then the mom ended up just raising John Lawson herself. She did later remarry to a guy that she met in Tennessee. John Lawson at this time was 20 years old and they moved to Winston-Salem, 2749 Knob Hill Road, which is going to be later deemed the House of Horrors. A neighbor spoke up and said that she used to babysit John Lawson when he was a little kid, that he was the next door neighbor to, you know, John's mom and she was a single mom at the time and that little Johnny would come over and she said that he was always like kind of weird and he would say things but she said he was super sweet to her he never mistreated her he always listened but he would do things at certain times that kind of scared her like he was very much obsessed even as a very very small child of with vampires and like scary movies where there was a lot of violence in them but she, as the neighbor she was you know with the vampire stuff she said he would jump out and he would he was just like really in that mind frame as a small child he also said that John Lawson's mother 
was a single mom at the time that she would like had different men in and out of her life all the time. She drank a lot. She just really felt like, you know, she wasn't maybe without saying it the best mom to John. Pazuzu's mother, who what's her name is Cynthia Lawson. She said that John Pazuzu failed the second grade, then later failed the ninth grade, and then later ended up, you know, just dropping out of school. So he already was failing school and second grade. And she actually even joked in an interview and said he he didn't fail it because he was failing his work. <laughs> he failed it because he just didn't go to school. And I'm looking at this woman going like, why didn't he go to school in second grade, sister? He was a child. That's your responsibility. But okay, go off, joke about it. Like, let's keep going here. The next door neighbor that I was telling you guys about that was best friends with her at one point and, you know, she watched little Johnny all the time, said that when Johnny was eight years old, that Cynthia, his mother, put him in a mental institution because he would beat her up and hit her and go off on her. And the neighbor really sympathized with Johnny. She was like, I mean, of course he's going to be angry and have these outbursts if you saw all the things that the mother was actually doing. And she said that she went with his mother to visit him while he was in this mental institution and it just broke her heart and her exact words were I me and her went to see Johnny and my heart broke because I say you know that little boy he didn't need to be there the one that needs to be there is the woman the mama now remember how I told you his mom remarried in 1998 to this other man and that's when they moved to Winston-Salem North Carolina this is when Cynthia says that he changed in all the interviews or the things that I saw she said that Johnny changed his whole personality changed he started becoming really dark and gothic and he started like shaving his head and like becoming really isolated and that he was fighting all the time with her new husband you know and they could not get along and he hated his stepdad at this point and I'm thinking okay Ma'am, obviously this did not start then if he was already failing all these school grades, if he was already, you were already admitting him into a mental institution because he was eight years old and he was hitting you and you're this and that or whatnot. Johnny's mom said that the more that he just started to like recluse and turn into this different person, she just thought like, I love him so much, you know, just, you know, whatever he wants to do. Now, around this time, Johnny Lawson actually went down and legally changed his name to Pazuzu Algarad. So he went and changed his name to that. And if you guys don't know, Pazuzu is actually like the name of the demon that was in the exorcist. And like, there's a whole long line of things that this Pazuzu demon has done. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but that's what he changed his name to. And at this point was a time where he, he filed his teeth down to sharp, you know, blades. And like you guys know, he had tattoos all over his face and his hair was matted and I saw an interview from somebody that went to high school with him that said that when he was in the ninth grade when he was in high school that the other kids would call him like doo-doo boy or stinky boy or something because he always stunk so you guys he was doing this years before she got remarried or like years you know before he shaved his teeth down and started getting tattoos on his face where he was like was not washing himself and stuff like that At the age of 26 he was actually diagnosed with agoraphobia and he was diagnosed with some other things as well but agoraphobia if i'm understanding this correctly is like a fear of leaving your house a, a severe severe panic disorder and just a fear of crowded places or open places or even being in a car like you can literally be terrified of being in a car and so this was allegedly the reason why he stayed in the house and stayed home all the time later pazuzu started getting caught up with what would be considered maybe the wrong crowd his mother said oh he was hanging out with people that i did not approve of and then he started doing a lot of substances mainly a lot of alcohol and meth that we know of and once he started doing the meth that is when his whole satanic worshiping and his you know demon like obsession just took a whole nother level as pazuzu continued to go deeper and deeper into his uh, substance abuse he went deeper and deeper into this like darkness that you would maybe call it he started having like a lot of people coming over to his house and his mother said that she would just turn a blind eye to things he basically took over 
this home that his mother and him lived in. And he would write all over the walls and his friends could just come in and out and do whatever that they wanted to do. And like, they completely tore up the house. And it was just a, it was a party house. A lot of friends said certain things like, you know, this was the place for the misfits. This was the place that anybody could come and there was no rules. You could do whatever you wanted to do. You could pee in the floor if you wanted. If you wanted to go poop in the corner, you could go poop in the the corner and that the place stunk but he always had a lot of friends there now 2008 Pazuzu was arrested on larceny charges and then later in 2011 he was arrested for choking his own mother out from there he went on to sacrificing animals and you know drinking their blood and like doing all kind of wild stuff I saw an interview where one of his friends said that what he would do is he would sacrifice the animals to the whatever demon that he was worshiping or Satan or whatever and he would eat the heart out and then drink the blood I mean it was just oh my gosh you guys I know y'all don't want to know all these details but like it was just wild okay he started claiming to his friends that he could control the weather and he was doing like all this black magic the more that he was using substances the more that people were coming over the more that mom was turning a blind eye the more powerful Pazuzu really did feel I mean you gotta imagine he's got a house full this was a kid that really didn't have any friends growing up I mean they called him doo-doo boy in school or whatever the word was poo-poo head whatever the words were stinky boy and now he's in this house that he's basically controlling that his mom is obviously paying for because he didn't have no job anyways he's got his tongue split he's got his teeth you know gnawed down he's like doing all these sacrifices and like all these people are coming over they're bringing their substances his friends would say that in the actual uh dishwasher instead of clean dishes it was full of like weapons he had girls that really liked him and as a matter of fact he had two young girls that he called his fiancés one we're going to talk about right now who is amber birch when pazuzu met amber birch she was fresh out of high school brand new baby girl just finished high school and then got went over there and got caught up in this mess y'all amber was nicknamed bubbles in high school she had a lot of friends and people that cared about her she did not have a father figure in her life that we know of i heard her friends say that the reason why she felt like she like attracted herself to pazuzu is because he was like a dad he was much older and just kind of like so wise and all of his spiritual ways and her friends said that before long she started noticing that amber stopped bathing as well she shaved her teeth down she quit brushing her teeth she shaved her eyebrows off she said that amber and pazuzu would cut each other and drink each other's blood her friends said that amber called her one day and was like i really want you to meet pazuzu like you've got to meet him like yes he's a devil worshiper he's a, you know he's a satanist and everything but like he's a really cool guy i want you to meet him and so her friend was like you know sure she was a friend from high school she loved her she was like sure great sounds like a winner like girl let me come over here and meet your man right she said when she got on the front porch. Get up there and everything was fine until I walked onto the front porch. The stench just, it was like a smack to the face. It was so strong. The house stunk so bad before she even opened the doggone door that it about knocked her off the porch. She said when she went in, she actually told Pazuzu like, man, the smell is like overwhelming. And he kind of laughed. Oh yeah, it's just the bodies in the basement. And she said she thought he was just, you know, crazy. Like he was just saying crazy stuff. But, you know, I don't, she did, she just could not believe how much her friend had changed being with this guy. As Pazuzu continued on his path, this, this stinky house and doing all these rituals and all this black magic and stuff, according to people around him, he got bored with the Church of Satan or the Satanic Church. He just, it wasn't enough to fulfill him. So he wanted to start his own thing. They started, you know, leaving and, and going different places to do, you know, rituals at nighttime, like maybe down by a river and stuff like that. And they were like, had all these like dogs in the house, like they had alive dogs. And then they had like dead animals in their house and out in the backyard. And you guys, when they, 
What, what was the mom doing this? Like y'all, this is, people said that they would go over there and that they would, they would see like a person like go over and poop in the corner. And then the dog would go over there and just like eat it. Like nobody ever cleaned anything. Nobody ever did anything. People just peed everywhere. Just like, oh my goodness. People walked around naked. There would be all kinds of like multiple people being in relations. It just was a complete free for all. And for some reason, People in this little tiny town was attracted to that. Like nobody heard of the skating rink or like going to the mall or the movies or anything like that. But nevertheless, now there was a lot of rumors that started going around that little town that Pazuzu had killed people, that he had murdered people, that he buried them in the backyard, that he had bodies in his basements. A lot of people just thought he was crazy. Like the neighbors, like you can only imagine what the neighbors thought, right? Like holy cow, you know, like people were, people were afraid of him and Pazuzu fed off of that. Like he finally had his identity that he wanted to have. He, he felt like he was, you know, this powerful being that could control the weather and like did all these sacrifices and people listened to him and people were attracted to him. And there was people that did interviews that said there was something about Pazuzu that was very, very magnetic. Now, allegedly authorities were keeping an eye on Pazuzu at this point. There was a 2010 arrest made in a connection to a murder of Joseph Chandler, who was 30 years old. He was found dead by a river where Pazuzu would do sacrifices in black magic. Pazuzu's friend was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and they labeled it an accident. But Pazuzu was convicted of an accessory after the fact and put on probation. Now, if they put him on probation for that, I don't know the way they do it over there in Salem, but probation officers, you know, they're all up in your business. They're, they're giving you, you know, tests. They show up at your house unannounced sometimes. Like, did they never show up at his house? Like, did they not smell that or see that or anything? Were they not popping UAs on him? Like, I'm so confused, especially if you were arrested for accessory after the fact of murder and you're on probation and now there's rumors of more murders happening. The rumors got so bad that Pazuzu was actually murdering people, killing people, burying them in his backyard, all of that crazy mess, that people were actually going to the police department and telling them, listen, this guy is doing this. He has some, he's saying that he has somebody, you know, in his basement. He's saying that he has this. Even to the point that his own mother, Cynthia, went there and told the cops that his girlfriend, Amber, had shot somebody and killed somebody and they buried him in the backyard. Now the cops did come to the house, knocked on the door. Hi, uh, Mr. Pazuzu, sir. Um, just wanna check, yeah, everything okay in here? No dead bodies in the basement? Okay, good, have a good day, have a good day, sir. That's basically what happened, allegedly, for entertainment purposes only. But I do want to mention that his mother, she and his girlfriend, Amber, did not get along at all. Like there was, there were stories saying that she choked her out one time, she choked his mother out one time, and that she would smack her, his own mother around too, just like Pazuzu would. And like Pazuzu, when he would have his house full of friends and stuff, he would threaten his mother right in front of them and just do all of this crazy mess. So she did not like Amber. So she went to the police and said that she knew that he had killed somebody, but nevertheless, they came there, they inspected, they didn't find anything, so they left. The more and more that Pazuzu was getting away with this, now you guys have to think about this, right? You have an obviously a very, very mentally ill man, right? That is getting away with all of this stuff, maybe demon possessed for real, okay? And the more he gets away with it, the more he feels powerful, like, yes, my sacrifices are working. Yes, the cops come here, they can't do nothing to me. So his friends and people that were coming around said that he was just getting worse and worse to the point that he was being abusive to his own friends in the household. He would let them know, like, I'm gonna kill you next. Or he would be talking to his friend and say, I want you to kill this person. And it was just getting out of control that even the people that were hanging out with him were becoming terrified of him. So people kept going to the police and saying, you don't understand, this man is doing this. I've seen this happen, I've seen this happen, I've seen this happen. So the cops finally got a real search warrant. And on October 5th of 2014, at this point, a search was done and they found two sets of skeletal remains in his backyard. And like all of his friends are sitting around like, 
duh, we've been trying to tell you guys this for years at this point. Now the cops were going thinking, okay, maybe they might find one set, but they were totally shocked to find two sets of skeletal remains in his backyard. They also found lots of animal bones. They said all throughout the house, there was like different animal cages and there would be dead carcasses of it in there. And that there were hundreds of flies everywhere and there were dead flies everywhere. And like you guys, I know we're already getting real detailed and gross here, but I just, you know, I, I, I'm envisioning this. I need you to, you know what happens before the flies, right? It's maggots. Like you got to imagine these people were living in a house full of maggots and dead body parts and pieces and feces and everything everywhere. And people are just coming in like, what's up? It's Friday. I got a, you know, I got a keg. Stepping over dead carcasses like what? The investigators had to actually wear full suits and masks just to breathe in this home. It was so toxic. They said that when they started, before they even got up the steps, that the smell was so overpowering that it about knocked them back. Like, how were all these people partying in this house? I will never understand. That day, the cops ended up making three arrests. Pazuzu, his girlfriend Amber, and his other girlfriend or two of his fiancés, Crystal. After the investigators like really checked out the bodies to find out who they were, they found out that the, they were the bones or the skeletal remains of two men that had been filed missing five years prior. Both of these men had been reported missing in 2009, okay? They didn't find these body parts until 2014, you guys, after many, many reports, many, many, you know, trips from different people to the police department, five years later. One of the bodies belonged to Tommy. Tommy was actually, according to what we know, did not even know Pazuzu. He had been with his family one day. He was like fixing this car radio, the stereo for his like friend or family member. And then he left from there and he went to walk home. He was supposed to meet his brother the next day to hang out and he never showed up. They reported him missing right away, but they never found him. So what we think is like he was just walking down the road and for whatever reason, he either got in the car with Pazuzu, maybe offered a ride, whatever, or they just snatched him did whatever maybe whatever and they got him and then they sacrificed him dismembered his body buried him in a shallow grave in the backyard the other remains that were found belonged to Joshua Weltzer. Now, Joshua Weltzer was a young father. He had been with his girlfriend for a long time, but he ended up falling into some trouble. He got, you know, started using substances, became addicted, got into some trouble with the law, and was struggling and having a hard time in that way. And that's how he got linked up with Pazuzu, was down that lifestyle. Now, we don't know exactly what all happened between them and why that Pazuzu ended up killing him, but allegedly Pazuzu shot him and put his body in his basement for days and then ended up him and his girlfriends or whoever dismembering the body, doing whatever, and then burying it in a shallow grave in the backyard. Josh's girlfriend actually did not report him missing for six months afterwards. Now she said this because he was on probation. She did not want to get him in trouble. She knew that he was already struggling with substance abuse and stuff, and she just did not want to, you know, make it an issue if it wasn't an issue. But when he did not come around or call for Christmas, knowing that she had his son and that he would never miss Christmas, that's when she really knew something was wrong. So she reported him missing six months later, which is neither here nor there because they ended up not finding him and until five years later. So what happened to everybody after this? Well, the three went to court. Amber ended up taking a plea deal and she immediately turned state's evidence against Pazuzu. She got 39 years for the murder and she admitted to the murder of Tommy and then helping Pazuzu with everything else. Now, Crystal Crystal actually only got like three years. She was only charged with accessory after the fact for helping to bury the bodies, which I thought was very, very interesting. I could not find very much on Crystal on exactly why she got that little bit of time with, with as much as happened and how high profile this is. I did see her after her sentencing. She turned around and she apologized to the family members. Did not look from what I saw like the family members was having any of that. I saw somebody roll their eyes. I don't know if that was the editing process of the journalist, but it's what it looked like. She apologized. She said she was only involved in it because she was afraid 
for her life. I would, and now I know she rolled too. I know she told everything because for her to get three years, she had to have just let it all out. But I think, so, I, I really want to know more. You can't hardly find anything on her and there's got to be a reason why. There's got to be a reason why. Now, Pazuzu. <sighs> he admitted to shooting and killing Josh. He was calling and writing his mom from the jail and like she disturbed me. I watched some videos with the mom and like he was like writing her and saying things like. You know, he said mom, of course. And Shaka Muku, which means what's up in Arabic. And he says, I'm so bored. Got a letter from you and one from Amber. I despise the human race. People are ugly and pointless creatures. I sit back and watch them and they anger me. I should get a medal for murdering these stupid <laughs> Maybe when I'm dead, the gods of chaos shall grant me the power. And she just laughed about it. Like, I'm like, how is this funny? I understand a mother's love, but at the same time, girlfriend, you do need, she needs some help. She needs some help herself. Because I didn't find anything about that funny. It was very, very disturbing to watch. While Pazuzu was in jail, and I could only imagine what the correctional officer saw with him in there. I'm telling you guys. I, you guys know I've been to jail. I've been to prison. And I've seen some things. Y'all have watched my story times. But I can only imagine what they saw. Allegedly, you know, Pazuzu started trying to take his own life. He just, you know, didn't want to be bothered with it anymore. He was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, he would try to chew through his arm. Now, you guys got to remember, his teeth were filed down. His teeth was, you know, his tongue was split. He had all of these, like, tattoos all over him. And, but he would, according to other people in the jail, he would try to chew through his arm or do all this wild stuff during a full moon. How did he even know it was a full moon in jail? Like, is, was he possessed? Was he possessed for real? From, from, a, from the get-go, from a little kid obsessed with being a vampire and all of this? I don't know. At one point, he cut himself really bad with an unknown object. And supposedly, according to the correction officers, they could not find the object. But they had him in an 8x10 cell alone. And what did he do with the object that he cut himself with? Like, they just could not figure it out. So, eventually, the jail just decided, like, look, we don't have what it takes to take care of this man. He's doing all of this wild stuff. So, they transferred him somewhere else. At this point, what ended up happening was he did take his own life. Now, supposedly, he chewed through his arm enough to take his own life. And he bled out, and then he died. Now, so I told you guys that his girlfriend, Amber, got 39 years. His other girlfriend, Crystal, she got three years. She actually got out just like a year or two ago, and so she is out now. I did see some journalists say things like, wow, Amber and Crystal's appearance changed so much. I don't know why it changed them. I can tell you why it changed. They were on substances in that house, okay? They got in jail. They're eating all that bread and food. And like, I could, I could not imagine what it was like for them to, especially, okay? Because it's one thing when you're in a dark house and you're like doing all this stuff and you're on so many substances that you're tweaked out of your mind and you're not in touch with reality and you're thinking all of this crazy crazy mess and then you get in jail and boom you're sober Skirt! and you realize what you've done and there's no taking it back you guys know if you've watched my prison videos the mind torture of me I could not imagine like and I've seen that I've seen people detox in there and it's just wild Another thing I want to talk about, so Pazuzu was 37 years old living with his mother and doing all of this stuff in the house. Now, no judgment to you if you are 37, 40 or whatever living with your mom, okay? Like, my kids, as long as they're doing the right thing, they could live with me forever if they want to. They don't ever have to, if they want to. Of course, I want them to be their own adults and live their own life and be happy and all of that stuff, but like... If they wanted to, if they were going to work and, you know, they were working on their dreams and they're not, you know, like my kids will always have a place at home if they need it, right? But I ain't letting my kids come live up in my house, tear my house up, tell me what to do, choke me, stink and poop and do all that. No, baby, you got to get out. You have got to get out. You poop in my living room floor one time, baby, you got to go, okay? I don't understand it. The, I feel like the mother, and like I said, I hate judging moms, but like, what is going on here? She, I think her friend that said years ago that she needed mental help, she needed to be in that facility. I think she was really on to something. 
I want to retouch on the fact that the mother said that he changed when she remarried. Baby Pazuzu admitted that he started drinking at 13 years old. Okay, he failed second grade, failed ninth grade, you know. Now, I understand some kids, so no judgment to anybody in your kids out there, right? But like elementary school, like they struggle. Sometimes they need to be held, held back. But when your second grader is failing a grade because they just don't go to school according to you or whatever, like literally second grade, what are they doing? They're, they're learning, adding and subtracting. They're coloring. They're learning songs. You know, like, mom, you need to step up your game here. It's something like, I don't know, you guys. I don't know. And the last thing that I want to touch on here is that in the end of the court proceedings, when everybody was sentenced and everything was done, the journalists were itching for the documents to be released because when you have a case like this or whatever, they typically seal the documents until, you know, everybody is sentenced. That way it doesn't mess up. No evidence gets out. You know, word doesn't get around about things that they found out. And so the journalists were itching and they immediately asked the judge, can you unseal the documents? And the judge was like, okay, I don't see any reason to have these documents sealed anymore. And when the journalists got in there, they realized how many people were telling the police department, what are you doing? Like, like there, this guy is murdering people and how they just pushed it aside, pushed it aside, pushed it aside. And I would be so curious to know why. And listen, I don't know them, the, the people that were on this case. Okay. But I do know that there is sometimes people will just, that are in positions, they will let the trash take out the trash, so to say. Not saying those people, you know, well, it was trashy. But anyways, the trash take out the trash. I know I've seen it myself in prison. Sometimes if you have an inmate that is just disrespectful to every, every officer, every inmate, and just really trying people, those correctional officers will turn a blind eye and let other inmates handle it. It happens all the time. And it just makes you wonder, did the cops think, okay, like this is this house full of like, you know, druggies and like Satan worshipers in a town that was really a faith-based town and had their religions and stuff that maybe they thought, okay, this is a house full of Satan worshipers. So we're just going to let them kill each other. Like whatever, we'll deal with it later. Like, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this? Do you think the mom had more responsibility. Do you think it's very interesting that the mom went and snitched or tried to tell on Amber, but never said anything about the things that her son was doing? Do you, do you wonder, like I wonder if maybe the only reason why she did that is because she wanted to get rid of Amber to be close because it was always like her and her boy? I don't know, it's so weird, you guys, it's so weird. Do you think Pazuzu was really possessed by the devil? Do you? I don't know. What do you guys think? So, all right, my loves, there is that story. You guys feel free to leave any other ones down in the comments section. I do read them and I will be doing another true crime video next Friday for you guys. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. As always, please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.